back to the Bangladesh, uh, the under nineteen World Cup, because this is your peak moment in junior cricket. Five for twenty nine, which was in the plate group at this stage. You took the wickets of Nafiz Iqbal, Aftab Ahmed, Ashikur, Rahman, who was the captain, Mamadoula. You said it. There's a guy, Mamadoula, who turned into a Bangladeshi legend, senior level. And Nadif Chowdhury, what do you remember most about that five wicket haul? Oh, man. The, uh, the Chittagong Stadium was full. There was like maybe 15, I would say 15, 20,000 people screaming. We batted first. We only made like 150 or 140 something. So didn't have much to go with. Um, but I was on that day for sure. All the variations, everything that I sort of planned kind of worked out. And um, once we had them, I feel like once we had them a few wickets down early and I was early in my spell, I got a few early wickets there and started to sledge, <laughs> started to sledge and put them under pressure big time. Uh, my cousin Abid was standing at first slip and uh, he actually took a, took a screamer whichever guy was caught slip, caught Ab- a Kishvani. That was Mamadoula, the one and yeah, only. Ma- Mamadoula, yeah. So that wicket, man, it was, uh, it was a quicker ball. Like, I used to bowl this quicker ball at, at, at some pace, I would say. And he, he nicked it, and Abed took a one-hand uh, over his head sort of diver, and they were under pressure. But uh, whoever came and finished off the game for them, he came in and, and like, literally first ball, uh, he was plumb in front. Like, there's no – it was, like, one of those where you're just, like – how are you not, how, how is that not out? So I, I ended up asking the umpire at least 10 times, like, how, how is that not out? And he just ended up having no, no, no answer for me. Like, so I would have had six, I should have had six wickets and whoever that guy was who ended up finishing it off there went on and, and obviously not out, but it was, uh, it was disappointing because uh, I think, I think had that guy had got given at that time, it was, I still had a few balls in my spell. Not that I would have taken another one, but I think that we would have been into their bowlers and it would have been interesting, but yeah, whatever. They managed to pull it off. And uh, yeah, I got a man of the match at that game. And yeah, I had to sign so many autographs. I saw like security were just caning guys and caning kids trying to get in through the fences and it was chaos actually. So um, it was a great experience for me at that time. Like there was army guys everywhere. They would escort us and it was a big deal. It wasn't too far uh, post sort of nine 11. So all that stuff was on, was on full throttle. And um, it was an experience for me where, you know, the, it started, I guess, with the five wicket hall and the league thing where it kind of made my name and then the five wicket hall in the West Indies regional against Barbados. Um, and, uh, and then obviously this, this five wicket hall in a, in a 19 world cup against a, a host nation, I guess it just gave me that sort of belief. Like, you know, you're, you're probably a, a decent player. You should pursue this cricket thing. And, and, uh, and I did. And, um, I didn't, uh, I didn't, I don't even know what I did with my skates and all my hockey equipment, but I didn't play hockey for many, many years um, after that. So yeah, that was the, that was the start of, of a little bit of success. And uh, it, um, it didn't go to my head, I would say, cause I was already a cocky little guy anyway. So it was just almost walking around like, as if like, yeah, you know, I, I was meant to do that. So definitely confident and um, yeah, won't forget that one ever. My, my dad and my uncle were there as well. For that so to have my dad there to be able to witness that with you know i spoke earlier about you know his sacrifices and what he sacrificed for for me in my life and um that was a gift that uh that i i really would never forget um giving him and and i give a lot of credit to to him and in, in supporting my career at that time and that was great and mama no arguably is not the biggest wiki you took at that tournament last two scorecards ireland and uganda ireland and the team with william porterfield gary wilson kevin o'brien yeah, who did you yeah, get I'm out like... owen morgan yeah, World Cup yeah winning captain owen morgan you got him under yeah. your thumb man take us to well, that well, wicket. well just remind me like what was it um caught, caught, bold. Or... caught him bold yeah, yeah yeah okay so um yeah he kind of smashed it and, and i you know had pretty decent hands i was a little athletic i remember i remember catching that one throwing it up and uh I mean, you know, you, you play these under-19 tournaments, though, Peter. You don't know uh, Owen Morgan is going to be Owen Morgan, right? Like, you just kind of go through it and, and, um, and, and everything. But Ireland had a gun team as well, if you call out those names. Uh, you know, Kevin O'Brien, Porterfield, um, uh, Owen Morgan, and, and just guys who, who, who played a pivotal role in, 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 uh, in making Ireland not only a successful ODI and, uh, team, but then a test team. Like, a lot of those guys played a huge role with that. And, Here's a funny thing, man, is like, 
you see all these teams, these under 19 teams and, and, you know, even Ireland, some of the associates, like you can even say Bangladesh at that time, like you have these under 19 players in your system and they just played a world cup, but you don't like, I'm talking for Canada. Like after that, like none of the guys really got a goal except for uh, Umar Bhatti, who, who obviously went on and had a very successful career, but he wasn't the most successful under 19 player for us by any means. He just kind of got it right and had that left arm and, and, and managed to, to sort of sort himself out. But yeah, we never really had any opportunities in the senior team coming out of that. There was no real program for that. And um, you guys all know the, the, the story of what happened to, to Jeff Thomas, the national team coach in 2003. So there was no under 23 set up anymore. Um, so really nothing for us to, to thrive on and jump on, but yeah, they figured it out two years later and, you know, the Ravindus and the Hirals and then the Tish Kumars uh, a few years, three, four years later, got, got a lot of opportunities coming out of their under 19 set up. And obviously they went on to have amazing careers. So, yeah, I mean, I know a lot of the guys, I speak to them even now, one of the guys, Gavin Bastian Palai, who's, uh, who's an optima, what do you call it? Eye doctor, man, optician or ophthalmologist. So he's an ophthalmologist. Check me out. He said, I got 20, 20 vision. Cause I was complaining. I couldn't see at night when I was driving, but he's like, you have 20, 20 vision. And I said, Gavin, Thank you very much, man. I'm so happy I don't have to spend money on glasses and all this nonsense. So, uh, but he's another guy. You know, we had a quick chat about him. Just the regrets of not 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 being given that platform, not being given that backing or support, or even pathway after that World Cup was was really disappointing for all of us. And um, I think a lot of the guys would have had pretty good careers had they given a, had they had a chance. But again, that's how it goes. And Canada had a stack team at that time as well. So you know, I'm I'm like fighting for uh, uh john davison's spot basically right as a half spinner and all that so it's like you know i'm, I'm a realist as well man you got to be dominating um you know at all levels at all times and uh it just wasn't meant for me at that time john, john davison was pretty good it was all right took 17 Davison's- wickets against usa <laughs> in an ica match <laughs> yeah i mean you yeah usa has come a long way let's just say that 